Hi everyone. Um, so in the previous video we looked at uh, polyhedra modeling and uh, in this exercise I'm going to show you uh, how we can develop some parametric application uh, using a polyhedron. Uh, so um, in the previous one I chose um, chamfered dodecahedron. Uh, you can also look at other types here. Uh, the reason why I chose this one is because we have uh, pentagons and hexagons. Uh, which will be kind of a simpler way of showing you how we can actually develop a system that takes in these polygons as an input. Um, so that polyhedron lo is located at the 66th index. And I want to begin by um, taking out the curves from the polyhedron. And let's look at what we have here. So uh, this by default gives me um, a bunch of curves and um, we are not going to model anything here three-dimensionally yet. Uh, what I want to do is first actually uh, look at the type of shapes we, we have on the polyhedron and then um, do this exercise two-dimensionally and then move it onto the polyhedron itself so that we can actually test uh, if it's working or not. So um, as I mentioned, we have uh, pentagons and hexagons uh, for this type of polyhedron. You can actually do um, model them here as a polygon. Um, for instance, if we want to do something on a hexagon, we can actually uh, start by the number of sides, or you can also um, draw them manually here. So for instance, we have a hexagon and a pentagon. Um, this would also work fine. If you test your um, code here on these two, then you, you might be able to move it onto the polyhedron. Um, I actually have a um, have a like in um, doing everything in, in Grasshopper. So basically, uh, we're going to do this parametrically here. And I'm going to first look at the Pentagon. And I think if this works, then um, the basic uh, two dimensional application that we're going to develop, it could also be replicated on a hexagon. Um, so um, I'm going to start with number of segments as five. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the base plane x, y, and the radius could be anything we want because we are going to do something topological here. And we're going to begin by exploding the geometry. So what that does is it gives us the line segments and the vertices. Um, now something about the line segments, um, if it's a pentagon, of course we get five, but for vertices we get six. Uh, remember that in uh, polygons or uh, polylines, the first and the last index actually coincide. So if you want to do anything here um, on all of these points, we might want to filter one of these vertices. But before I get into that, um, let's actually think about what we want to do. So I want to develop a flat shape here that is kind of like a star, uh, but I want to have a connection uh, along this edge, uh, because remember, uh, this edge is where the polyhedron is constructed. So this edge is shared between a pentagon and a hexagon. So um, if we want to maintain some sort of geometric consistency, uh, we might want to utilize the length of this edge uh, uniformly. Um, so you can actually do that by using evaluate curve function. It's located under curve analysis. And if you get the segments and re-parameterize the segments, then you can supply any type of numeric value here uh, to evaluate a point along these line segments. So I'm doing this operation on five edges at the same time, but you can see that uh, when I supply zero, it's at the beginning of these curves. 0 0.5 gives me the, the midpoint and one gives me the end of it uh, because we re-parameterize the curve. If you don't reparameterize it, then uh, this is kind of taken as a nominal length and I'm um, kind of moving one unit uh, in the direction of the curve here. Uh, but this length, of course, might be more than one. Um, so for this exercise, I'm actually going to limit the digits to one and I need uh, to reparameterize these curves and I'm going to evaluate a bunch of points. Uh, the first one is going to be 0 0.4 and uh, the second one is going to be 0 0.6. So uh, what I want to do is develop the star in type of a polygonal connection uh, that connects this point to this point here. So I need to jump uh, here and I need another point along this axis here that doesn't exist yet. 
So what I want to do is also connect the endpoints to the center of the polygon. Um, I can actually do that by um, generating another evaluate curve here and get the end um, endpoints. And I want to draw a line uh, from these endpoints to the centroid of the polygon. And to get the centroid, you can type in area. And area could be extracted from surfaces, but it also works with um, uh, works with curves. So it gives me the centroid. And if I draw a line here, uh, this will basically give me a connection from all the edges to the centroid. And I can again evaluate these curves here. So I can evaluate any point along these curves. So um, let's say that we want to get the point at um, 0 0.5. Uh, what I want to do is now um, arrange these points in such a way that we connect them. So I want to start from 0 0.6. I want to go to this point right here. Uh, I'm going to stack them in an order so that we can understand how they're going to go. And the last point will be here. So um, let's try to merge them. And I start with this point go to this point and then end up at this point and in order to make them into clusters because we want uh, to on only connect these points um, I mean we can also do a single polyline actually um, uh, but that would require a higher function like a weaving function um, so maybe we do other we look at other tools like curve tools to for this exercise um, so in order to put them into containers, I have to graft each one of them. And what that does is it gives me clusters. And when I do a polyline, um, you're going to notice that the ordering actually does not work. So um, we start from this point, go to this point right here, but end up in this point. The reason is because the ordering of uh, the list, the outer list is actually consistent, right? So wherever we are um, getting the 0 0.6 point, uh, the order of the line list is exactly the same. So that's why we are not able to shift to the next list. So in order to shift, I have to um, include a shift list function here. And I want to now do a positive shift here, uh, positive one. And I want to keep the wrapping on so that when I supply this, uh, these values will be wrapped. Um, but this operation actually adds one more data stream here. So what you need to do is uh, actually simplify these, um, these graphs so that um, the data would only come as uh, single lists. Now, these polylines are connected. Uh, but what I want to do is also include this point right here. So, um, uh, what I can do is do the same shift list operation um, or maybe get rid of the shift list operation but start with the 0, 04 points here as well. For instance, if I include another uh, data stream here and supply these points, then I can develop this type of connection here like a Z shape or an S shape. And then uh, this will be a closed boundary shape. And another option would be to um, actually, I mean, if this is confusing, we can actually uh, keep these polylines, but also develop some lines uh, between uh, these two points here. And let's actually include those curves as well. So these will be my bounding, uh, bounding curves for the star shape uh, that you can see. So I start with the pentagon, but extracted a star shape inside of it. So, um, uh, I can actually input um, all of these shapes and flatten this list and then join curves and see if this will give me a boundary. So if I do boundary surfaces, this is the star shape that I wanted to get to. And one thing that is cool about this one is um, it's parametric, so I can actually play around uh, with this midpoint evaluation here to get other types of um, star shapes uh, forming. And this is kind of a simplest um, parametric application we can actually do uh, that is based on a polygon. 
uh, imagine making curves or other types of complex geometries or two-dimensional shapes or even three-dimensional shapes. Uh, I mean, these could be also um, built as lofted surfaces as well. So I'm going to keep it at 0 0.5 and let's see if the same code would work on a hexagon. Uh, so remember we were working with a pentagon. All I have to do is change this index to be six and it works perfectly fine uh, on a hexagon as well. It also works with a, um, a quad or a square and um, work, seems to work fine in a triangle as well. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have two um, two segmented uh, polygons, of course. So this would this could actually be scaled up or down. So uh, it's it's a nice way of looking that your code is working. And um, the next step is actually to move this onto the polyhedra. Uh, now let's look at our polyhedra shape, which is located here. Um, I'm going to temporarily move this out of the way. So let's move it down here. Um, and I'm going to disable it so that it doesn't confuse us. Um, now, one thing I want to mention here is that um, these, these curves are also, um, they could also be closed into uh, planar surfaces. Um, but we are dealing with two types of curves, two types of um, uh, hedrons or um, uh, engons, basically. The pentagons and hexagons. So I want to be able to filter them and maybe do some sort of a different parametric application to either one of them. And so to do that, we need to actually look at the vertex count of these poly polylines and do some sort of filtering. And we can actually do that by exploding these polygons. And if you look at the vertex count here, you can see that some of them have seven vertices, some of them have six vertices. Um, remember that if it's a hexagon, it will give us seven vertices total, but if it's a pentagon, it will give us six. So I can use this as a filtering mechanism. Uh, basically, I can do list item and, um, sorry, list linked, list linked. And um, this list length will actually give me the total number of vertices per pentagon or uh, for hexagons. So we have a lot of sevens means uh, hexagons and there are a lot of sixes they're also divided at, a, at an index but that doesn't concern us the, this list might be actually um, kind of interwoven and maybe they're mixed so i want to be able to automatically um, dispatch or uh, separate the two lists into the type of shapes that we are dealing with so if i um, uh, first thing i need to do is flatten this list so we get into a single list and then I can look for an equality. Uh, equality is used under math operations. It basically compares two sets of values. Uh, for instance, if I want to compare if this item matches seven, then it will give me a value of true, which means those two values are the same, and false if those two values are not the same. And uh, this could be used to actually uh, filter the data. For instance, if I attach a dispatch here, dispatch is also a list filtering function. Um, what it does is it uses this as a pattern and we can filter any type of list. And my list is going to be the curves themselves. So um, when I apply this true false list, if uh, the value hits true, then the, I the corresponding item from the list will be sent to A. If it it's false, then it will be sent to B. So um, list A will actually give me uh, hexagons like this. Uh, I can rename them as hexagons. And uh, list B will give me uh, pentagons. So um, that actually means um, I can actually filter this data. I'm going to hide uh, these as well. And I can work with either one of those. Uh, now, this might be a bit confusing, but if I hide the hexagons and show you pentagons, you can see that um, the hexagons actually define or surround the pentagon, so it, it's not possible to see them. Um, but we can also look at it uh, like this. So if I do boundary surfaces, these are the pentagons, and these are the hexagons, so the pentagons are voided. Um, so the next step is basically to use these two and maybe 
use our code below um, to do some sort of application. Um, so for instance, rather than using this polygon here, um, I can input these hexagons here, uh, but I want to treat all of them uniformly. So I need to graft uh, my hexagons so they will be supplied to this algorithm uh, one by one. So um, I'm going to connect these here and uh, let's see what we get. Uh, let's see, this is actually giving me um, maybe this join function uh, is not working correctly, but let's see. We get curves. Um, yeah, I mean, this I was afraid it, it was going to do something like this actually, because the um, we need to also combine these lists here, the corresponding lists, and that's actually not working uh, like I anticipated. So I'm going to undo this operation and go back. Um, go back to the polygon. Let's go back to the polygon. Um, let's hide this for a for a while. Um, so what I want to do is make sure that um, we don't use this uh, joint function on two joint lists. So this line is actually not um, uh, not joined to these curves properly. So uh, what I want to do is um, use the merge function and include this point inside of this list as well. So um, I'm going to try to add one more index to the merge, supply this point here, uh, graft it and simplify it and delete this line here. So you can see that that actually does the same thing. The polyline is now drawn from this point here going here going to the diagonal and ending up here and uh, that seems to work uh, a lot better um, so it's joining the curves and giving me a boundary so let's see if this would work um, for the data that we are dealing with so again i'm going to try it on the hexagons i grafted them and joined them and now you see that it's actually working a lot better. So we don't need this polygon anymore. And we can also hide um, all of these calculations here. Uh, you can just choose them, go to solution, uh, preview, uh, toggle the preview selected off so that you will only look at uh, these shapes. And I can do the same operation. Um, I'm going to just make another copy uh, here and move it below and graft the pentagons as well and connect the pentagons and see what we get. So uh, now the code is working on pentagons and hexagons and we have direct access to their parameters. So for instance, if we want the pentagons to be behave in a different way, I can actually um, change their parameter here and that will give me a different type of shape in the uh, pentagons. And I can also do some sort of a different manipulation for the hexagons as well. So for instance, I made the hexagons a bit thicker and the pentagons a bit thinner. And uh, we can join both of these under a geometry container and bake this geometry to look at what we have done. So um, this is actually the final shape um, that we were able to do. So uh, this is kind of a two-dimensional um, example, but basically it shows you that uh, you can use the Hedron as a starting point to develop any type of uh, two-dimensional shape. And we can also parameterize this. We can add kind of um, uh, voids or uh, holes inside of them. Uh, we can also control these shapes uh, parametrically, but it will be best to first uh, get acquainted with uh, 2D manipulation of these um, shapes and then uh, see what we can achieve uh, in three dimensions.